And now to the U.S., where a year after Donald Trump urged thousands of his supporters to fight like hell, just hours before the U.S. Capitol building was overrun on January the 6th, 2021, authorities in the United States are still prosecuting accused rioters. More than 700 people have been arrested over the incident, which Democrats often describe as an insurrection that aims to violently prevent the certification of President Joe Biden's election victory. We have details in this report. All right, joining us now to, um, we'll bring you that report in as subsequent bulletins. Joining us now to discuss this is a former advisor to the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Christopher Harvin. Good to have you join us. Thank you very much for the opportunity today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, let's look at one year after. Um, what, what do you think, or where do you think that the um, insurrection stands when it comes to America's history? And America has been through some really dark places in history. But when you look at the insurrection, where does it stand? You know, I think January 6th last year was a very sad day for America. It, it has to be one of the days that, that um, goes down in history as one of the worst challenges to democracy and one of the worst days in American's history. As you know, the Constitution uh, provides for peaceful demonstration. And in, a, in an election like this, in a democracy like this, uh, there's a right to peaceful demonstrate. There's a right to challenge elections with courts and, and through um, a constitutional uh, mandate. However, um, there's, no, there's no cause for violence and there's no place in violence. And you've seen the far left and the far right whether it's BLM or January 6th, certain individuals in those areas have incited violence. Mm. And, and w let's just look at how, what could have played out in the White House. Um, now, we understand, I, I know that there is a select committee in Congress that is, that is now investigating what played out that day. And there are um, new information. We had, there was new information as to uh, people who had called President Trump, asking him to stop what was going on at the Capitol. But I also know that you were um, at a former international corporate and communication, uh, communication advisor and former Bush White House appointee. So you understand firsthand what could have played out in the White House that, that day. Talk to us about how you imagined um, things could have been in the White House. So part of my background is actually in international political advising, uh, running campaigns. I, I run a nonprofit called Vanguard Africa that supports free and fair elections uh, throughout the continent. And, you know, I think that with the irregularities in the election, uh, challenges to, to the voting block, irregularities with write-in ballots, I think the, the Trump administration had the right to call for investigations and had the right to, to investigate irregularities because um, that's the beauty of the, of the power of the United States is we have free and fair elections and we have um, the ability to challenge those elections legally. Um, but there's no, there's no reason for violence. You know, this happens in, around the world uh, with the ability to, to challenge elections and, and call for recounts. And so I have no doubt that there was a that there was a conversation in the White House about um, challenging these elections, having you know having voting recounts. These happened in 2000. These happened in 2004, as you remember um, the Bush the Bush White House challenged elections, the Gore campaign challenged elections. We had challenge to the uh, minimal challenges to the election when McCain faced Obama. Uh, so no doubt, as there's a very energized polarized electorate here between Democrats and Republicans that either side would have challenged those elections peacefully. And should the insurrection be seen as a singular, singular event in history or a public display of an ongoing threat um, of domestic terrorism in the U.S. that has now been emboldened by the insurrection? I think you've seen a lot of organization by the far left and the far right and the extremists um to integrate within the political um system here um and cause violence among uh, various um uh demonstrations and i think there's a number of individuals here that that probably should be prosecuted uh should be investigated um and i think a number of individuals um that were peaceful probably got caught up uh in the situation and violated the laws of, of trespassing on the capitol in some form 
But does it help that um, the, this narrative continues to be reinforced by um, Republican members of con Congress like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Ted Cruz, who continue to, to um, question the 2020 election and embrace conspiracy theories like QAnon? No, I don't think that's helpful uh, to the stability of the elections here. I don't think that's helpful uh, to the stability, but that's their democratic right. That's the right to challenge um, um, what happened and the processes that have happened against. But it should be peaceful. It should be uh, within the systems of the law, uh, within the systems of the con with the with the mandate of the Constitution. Um, and at some point, we have to put this behind us. Um, for the good of the country, and we have to put our differences behind us for the good of the country. We're facing a lot of challenges with COVID, uh, the economy. Uh, we have challenges with China and Russia, um, and we have to put some of these differences behind us for the future of our children and the future of our country. Um, and I do think that 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 political discourse, when peaceful, is productive um, and and signals uh, the strength of our democracy. However, violence does not. Can, can America really put this event be, behind her? Because we see a lot of people will link this to what is playing out now with the COVID-19 pandemic, where um, there are conspiracy theories surrounding the vaccines, and there are people who are not willing to take the vaccines just because of these conspiracy theories. Hasn't that event sort of spiraled to other areas of, of life in America? Well, America's faced this course before. We faced this course um, in Vietnam. Um, we face discourse um, and challenges and conspiracies um, across the board. And, you know, other countries have as well. And I think we will put these differences behind us for the good of our country. We have to, um, and just as other countries have to. And, and it's important that we understand what happened on January 6th. We prosecute those who broke the law, uh, particularly uh, with violence or with uh, trespassing. But it shouldn't be a political witch hunt that the Democrats use uh, to suppress um, opposition. But sh should, shouldn't that be um, some sort of bipartisan effort to address radicalization and political polarization in, in America? There has to be. There has to be um, political common ground. There has to be. We have to come together with both sides. Um, and I think we have to take the extremists. Um, out of the equation. Uh, we have to get back to working together as a partisan um, political bloc. Um, we've seen that in the past work very well, um, both in the Bush administration to an extent in the Obama administration, in the Clinton administration. Um, we've had great leaders in this country who have, have put that partisanship behind us, and we, we still have those uh, in our country. And I believe that we will come together again for the good of this country. Uh, we're going through a difficult time, like you said, with COVID and the economy, but America's strong and we will, we will survive and we will thrive, continue to thrive. And you, you have said over and over again, um, and I just want to quote, let's put this behind us. Um, can you have, can you put this behind you? Can you have the, some sort of um, nation, just basic unity in the country without addressing public safety? And can you ha address um, public safety without addressing domestic terrorism? And when you address domestic terrorism, how do you put the insurre insurrection behind you? So that's interesting when you talk about public safety and, and awareness, because our first responders, particularly our Capitol Hill police force, uh, our federal government police forces, our, our, our uh, National Guard um, that protected the Capitol, you know, these are first responders that, that are true Americans who put their lives on the line every day. Um, and, and God bless those that lost their lives that day or, or subsequently the weeks after um, with the four officers who committed suicide. Um, I do think that, that everyone has to step back and, and, and there's a respect situation. I think that we have to respect that everyone is entitled to their beliefs. That's part of our democracy. Uh, and we're entitled to peacefully express our beliefs. And we need to respect that, that we do differ and find common ground to come together. The cancel culture here, when you disagree of, of censoring on Twitter or censoring or, or not becoming friends, um, this shows the political discourse and the disrespect for others. And I truly believe that if we had respect for, for differing opinions and we found common ground, that would, we would be a lot stronger. And I do feel like we will find that um, uh, soon, I hope. 
And I wish we have enough time to talk about um, where the Republican Party fits in in all of this in the wake of the Trump presidency. But I'm told my time is up. Thank you so much for talking to us. International okay. Corporate. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, International Corporate and Co Communications Advisor and former Bush White House appointee, um, Christopher Harvin, thank you so much. Thank you very much.